Christopher. Doug and Nicole are on deck now for the news coming up at 5 o'clock. Hello, nice, my friends. Nice, nice look behind you. I like yeah, that. Yeah, like good. that. CBS New and different. different. Like what you've done with the place. <laughs> <laughs> Redecorated today. Yeah, right. Thank you both. We yeah. appreciate you, and we appreciate you at home. One North Texas school district, three students dead from fentanyl this year. In one of those schools, eight students caught selling drugs. What CBS News Texas is uncovering today, including why this scary drug problem may be even worse in most North Texas schools. This is CBS News, Texas. Hi there, and welcome to the new and somewhat reimagined CBS News Texas. The look, the name, going to be slightly different than what you're used to, but I promise you, we're still the same trusted lo uh, local news source and the news that impacts you across Texas, the country, and of course the world. Now, just a quick note, don't go getting anyone in trouble in your house. We've got a new name, right? CBS News Texas. So that means you might have to change or update your DVR recordings if you record us and watch us on your own time. Don't don't yell at your husband. He didn't forget. It's there just a new name. <laughs> so listen, we've mentioned some great new coverage that we have for you, which includes our first alert weather team, keeping us up to speed on the drenching rain that we had this morning. And then the sunshine, it just appeared brilliantly. Yeah. Let's get on over to first alert chief meteorologist Scott Padgett with what is next. Hey, Scotty. Hey there, uh, Doug and Nicole are looking great for our new look here at CBS News Texas and looking great outside at Clyde Warren Park. You can see people out and about not needing a coat right now. The sunshine reflects off of the trees blowing around just a little bit. It is 79 degrees with our winds out of the south southwest near about 15 miles per hour. But what we're tracking are some changes on the way. Want to alert you to the fact that tomorrow it's going to be 70, but Friday only 54. So cool but dry morning for us all going into Thursday. Then going into Friday, we have a front moving through and it's going to bring some more rain. Scattered showers at a 40% chance for all of North Texas. And also want to alert you to the fact of potential storms on Sunday. So uh, we're still analyzing some of the data coming in. I can walk you through the rain chances on the way Friday morning and still some scattered showers around as we start out the day. Could be some light rain off and on through the day on Friday. Just bugging you a bit as a rounding out the week 54 the best we can do for a high temperature then going into Friday night still some of that rain sticking around Saturday also still seeing a little bit of rain sticking around a high temperature of 60 so a little bit of a warm up on the way but Sunday more storms in the forecast I'll walk you through that coming up and look at the timing of when the storms will move through in just a few minutes all right timing is important Scott thank you you've seen it we have reported it for you police officers in the spotlight for all the wrong reasons but now police policies some at least here and across the country are starting to change. Senator John Cornyn, in fact, leading the charge. Our Nicole Nielsen today with what you need to know from Dallas. The fact is um, policing has changed over the years and the public's expectations of the policing profession are higher than they've ever been. When it comes to law enforcement response, Senator John Cornyn says it couldn't be more important. It's why he introduced the Law Enforcement De-Escalation Training Act. It equips them and trains them to be able to do their job better and safer. Today, during a roundtable with Dallas leaders, Senator Cornyn highlighted how the act just passed into the law in December is meant to equip local law enforcement and mental health professionals. The goal was to find better ways to improve the relationship between the police and the communities in which they serve. In part, the law authorizes $124 million in federal grant funding over the next four years. The money will be spent on educational trainings to learn alternative uses of force, as well as safer responses to individuals experiencing a mental, behavioral, or suicidal crisis. Necessary force should only come into play if there's no other reasonable alternative. Senator Cornyn and Mayor Eric Johnson had similar talks about improving law enforcement response after George Floyd's death back in 2020. Those discussions helped develop this law. In Dallas and in cities across this great nation, we need well-qualified, well-equipped, and well-trained police officers. And I can't emphasize that enough. Uh, when it comes to policing, Good training saves lives. Today, leaders discussed the importance of ongoing collaboration between departments before getting into a training session to demonstrate de-escalation techniques, like how to handle a domestic dispute. What we saw here is while it wasn't necessarily any kind of crime being committed, it was essentially a civil dispute, but it could quickly escalate out of control. And to me, that's a perfect example of the sort of everyday use of this de-escalation training that I think, again, will restore 
any trust uh, that may have been lost in law enforcement itself. Now, today was just step one. These meetings are essential so that they can develop the curriculum that they want to teach. And once that's all decided, then they get the funding from the Department of Justice. In Dallas, Nicole Nielsen, CBS News, Texas. So to come here at 5 o'clock, accused of kidnapping and murdering a 7-year-old girl. Prosecutors in Wise County now announcing their plans for the upcoming trial against this man, Tanner Horner, what he will face in the death of Athena Strand. And we share the wild video of that street takeover in Austin over the weekend. But today, the bigger problem now exposed with city leaders giving some details on what they feel went wrong. Good evening, Doug and Nicole. Tonight on the CBS Evening News after CBS 11 News at 5. The disaster in Syria and Turkey raises new questions about safety measures. How would buildings here fare during a massive earthquake? We go in depth. That's tonight on the CBS Evening News.